Zebronics for life. Bluetooth mode. See you.
गुड इवनिंग सर वी वेट फॉर एज यूजल फॉर थ्री फोर मिनिट्स एंड देन वी स्टार्ट यस सर गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग now after this actually only two subjects are left one is uh, ca panis so that we can have one mega class by uh, dr bakshi we can ask him so when he is ready because now all the like dnb has got exams in october and uh, mch exam yeah. is in i think july so students are yes, busy sir. preparing for their exams and almost everything is over and apart from that only reflux that is mega ureter obstructive and refluxing mega ureter is left so that is that topic is absolutely ready with us so later on we can uh, you know can do it and then for the practical point of view we will conduct the classes yes sir Sir, uh, who will be answering today? Sir, today Dr. Sashwat and Dr. Achin Sir will be answering. Sir. today sashwat and achin tar answering correct yes sir good, yes, sir. good. i think we should start dr gite yes sir yes sir yeah 
Should I start, sir, with the first slide? Yeah, so Achint has joined. Yes, sir. Sir has joined. He is joining, correct? Yes, sir. I just confirm, sir. Yeah, Achint is there. Okay. Fine. Okay, Swastik, you can start. Yes, I will start with the first. Good evening, everyone. A 57 year female uh, Muslim homemaker pres presented complaints of headache, palpitations, and fluctuating blood pressure for about three months. Yeah. So, Sashwa, this is the history. Yes, sir. Now, of course, there are many causes of headache, but when you come across such patients, what are the urological causes that comes in your mind. And then you can talk of other, when the examiner asks you, what are the yes, causes, sir. what do you mean by, you know, patient has got headache and palpitations? Yes, sir. Sir, in the urology OPD, first we should uh, think and rule, up, uh, rule out a pheochromocyte. That is of utmost importance, sir. And uh, uh, along with that, sir, headache and palpitations can be uh, because of sir, tension headaches or migraines, that could be a common uh, etiological cause. We don't know about the perimenopausal condition. Of, so, of urology, once when you come into urology, urology can be renal and non renal. Yes. So, sir. what are the renal causes of headache? Means basically uh, hypertension. Sir, it could be a renal artery uh, stenosis, sir. One. Second. Then it could be a paraneoplastic syndrome also because of RCC. Okay. Third. Tell us all the causes, na? Sir, it could be a renoma. Polycystic kidney. Polycystic kidney. kidney. Yes, sir. And some even sometimes they're obstructed. Yes, sir. That can also cause transient rise in blood pressure, sir. So, these are the main causes. So, you know, if, why we are telling you this little theory? Because when something like this comes in your exam also, you can write the classification and then other causes. And what are the other causes? Means non-renal causes, urological? Non-renal causes will be, sir, pheochromocytoma. And uh, uh, that could be there, sir. It could be, uh, um, sir, aldosterone secreting tumor of the adrenal. Yes, and, and all the three still, no? Cushing's. Yes, sir. Cushing also. Cushing yeah, also yeah. Yes, sir. And in a renal, even as the CKD or a chronic kidney or end stage renal disease. Yes, sir. Okay. And then apart from that, yes. what are the other causes that you can enumerate? Sir, other can be medical causes of uh, headaches and migraines, sir. Got it. Yeah. So, Dr. Gita, you want to elaborate something? Uh, no, sir. Already he has uh, enlisted the causes of headache. So it is either related to the kidney or related to the adrenal urologically. Uh, then in kidney, uh, it may be uh, associated with uh, uh, hypertension like renal arteriosclerosis, page kidney, then Crohn syndrome uh, in adrenal, then uh, uh, aldosteronism, then uh, all three are pushing, pushing, then pheochromocytoma. This headache in pheochromocytoma is, uh, is, is due to uh, the secretion of epinephrine. So while uh, when he is suspecting the uh, any uh, adrenal related pathology, uh, in, in next uh, he has to ask all the uh, uh, symptoms, and the the, the symptoms are uh, uh, what to be asked is due to the, either it is due to the increase in uh, the 
epinephrine or it is due to increase in the uh, dopamine so the symptoms related to increase in uh, epinephrine is uh, as i rightly told uh, headache profuse sweating palpitation then apprehension pallor and flushing and the symptoms related to the uh, dopamine increase is uh, nausea vomiting uh, due to vasodilatation in uh, git so these are the symptoms related to the pheochromocytoma again uh, uh, he has to ask about all the familial aage jaisa jaisa jayenge waisa bata do itna to aage chalte fine okay so uh, yeah swastik go ahead patient is apparently well 3 months ago she started developing intermittent headache and fluctuating blood pressure <coughs> headache was all over the head throbbing in nature increased over 10 last 10 days was initially intermittent and now continuous type aggravated during walking or exercise relieved temporarily with medications and on further evaluation headache was associated with sweating palpitation and easy fatigability fine anything else ajint you want to ask <laughs> Sir, we can also you, ask. We can also you hear me? Ask about photophobia and uh, whether it was aggravated by some noise or patient like to. Avoid. Whether any precipitating factor is there or not. So, Achin, what are the any other issue you want to ask? Uh, nothing. Sir, any no, negative. No, no, negative. No, no. When 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 you are uh, expecting or suspecting some adrenal pathology. Uh, then you have to ask uh, whatever we have enumerated as the diag uh, differential diagnosis after at the end of uh, chief complaint. The we have to ask all the history related to all of these diagnoses. Like uh, for example, if it uh, it is if it is due to increase in cortisol, if it is due it it is due to increase in aldosterone level. So, उसका पूरा एक protocol बना के लिख के रखना है क्योंकि ये case अगर exam में आया, so it will be not an easy case. फॉर एग्जाम्पल इनक्रीज इन कार्टिसोल अगर पूछना है तो आप तुमको वेट गेन पूछना पड़ेगा सेंट्रल ओबेसिटी डायबिटीज हाइपरटेंशन डिप्रेशन ऑस्टियोपोरोसिस एंड स्किन इकोमोसिस और हाइपोकैलिमिया दिज आर द रिलेटेड टू द इंक्रीज इन द कार्टिसोल एंड द सिम्टम्स रिलेटेड टू इंक्रीज इन आलोस्टेर अगेन हेड एक हाइपर टेंशन मसल वीकनेस क्रैम्स पॉल्यूरिया नॉक्चूरिया पैराप्लेजिया पॉलिडिश दिज आर द सिम्टम्स Like uh, this is related to the aldosterone. Uh, Few chromosomes again. Uh, classically, it is a headache, uh, whatever you are told, diaphoresis, agitation, palpitation, emotional outburst, uh, giddiness, uh, nausea, vomiting. These all are uh, the symptoms related to the few uh, chromosomes. Like it is like uh, there are five five P's. Ka ek synonym uh, hai. Pressure uh, increases nine percent. Pain that is headache is eighty percent. Perspiration, hai, palpitation, pallor, and paroxysm. These are the uh, five to six P's you can uh, uh, remember. And the classical triad is the pain and perspiration with palpitation. So these are the three important uh, dominant symptoms related to the pheochromocytoma. Uh, Again, uh, other uh, the symptoms related to other causes like history of trauma, history of operation, history of uh, pain, long, long duration pain. Then uh, yeah, history of any already told surgery. So uh, again, history related to some familial history. Be is kya ke jab familial history me jayenge to bata to. Ye sab history one go me aana chahiye ki examiner ko lagna chahiye ki you are thinking about all the diagnosis related to the adrenal. That is the for example, pet kidney ro, renal artery stenosis ro, ya fir pheochromocytoma, ya fir Cushing, ya fir. सो ये सब सब का एक सीक्वेंस बना के रखना है और वो सीक्वेंस के हिसाब से एक 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 दो दो लाइन हर एक का पूछना है कि इन स्पाइट ऑफ यू यू मे बी नोइंग द डायग्नोसिस यू शुड आस्क लाइक ऑल द सिम्टम्स रिलेटेड टू ऑल द पैथोलॉजीज यू आर एक्सपेक्टिंग रिलेटेड टू द एडमिट्स दैट्स व्हाट आई फील या ओके स्वस्थ गो एड There are no history of vomiting, visual disturbances, no history of trauma to head, no history of fever or burning insulation, no history of lithuria, hematuria, no history of similar complaints in past, no history of facial puffiness, lower limb edema, exertion dyspnea, no history of uh, lower urinary tract symptoms, no history of disease due uh, decrease during output. Uh, coming to past history, uh, patient with a diagnosed case of hypertension on uh, type cardiac, twenty milligram type Delma H, 
tab 81, tab M long, and tab mini press XL. A known case of diabetes mellitus, she is on Sida hence 100 mega, and, and there is no history of surgery in past. Family history nothing contributory, and personal history consumes mixed diet. Appetite, appetite is adequate, bowel bladder is normal, and she is a non smoker, non tobacco chewer, and non alcoholic. So, Achin, in this uh, family history, uh, what you are anticipating? Uh, sir, if you are suspecting pheochromocytoma, uh, then it has uh, <coughs> many syn uh, genetic syndrome associated with it. Namely, it could be associated with men 2A and 2B, and uh, uh, neurofibromatosis 1 and paraganglionic syndrome. And sir, uh, so we have to ask a particular history about that. Sir. Okay. So can you just uh, tell us in brief what are the different syndromes and what you get into this? In men 2A, uh, sir, it's uh, mainly medullary carcinoma of thyroid with 50% uh, chances of pheochromocytoma with sir, uh, hyperparathyroidism. And in men 2B, it's uh, again medullary carcinoma of thyroid with uh, morphonite features with uh, peripheral uh, neuromas. So we have to ask history about that. Then, sir, in the neurofibromatosis... Mucosal neuro. Mucosal neuro. These are mucosal neurons. Tick. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Then, sir... Go ahead, uh, Yes. Then in neurofibromatosis, we have to take history about uh, multiple lumps in the body uh, all over, which are actually neuromas, and any cafe do levels of spot in the family, if it is present, sir. Then, sir, uh, in uh, von hippel lindau syndrome, sir, it is one of the uh, major syndromes. Uh, uh, Theopromocytoma is associated in 20% of the VHL syndrome, sir. We have to ask history about the cerebral hemangioblastomas, then uh, epidermal stadionomas, pancreatic, pancreatic tumors, and retinal angiomas, like loss of vision, any stroke, Okay. Fine. Okay, go ahead. First take. The patient was conscious, cooperative, well oriented to time, place, and person. She was well built and nourished. Purple side was 80 per minute in right radial artery, regular rhythm. Uh, BP was 180 by 110 in right arm spine position. BP recordings fluctuated from. 90 by 50 to 20 by 100 during the board stay and respiratory rate was 18. She was afebrile, saturation 99%, room air, Karnowski score 90. No evidence of pilot rectus, science clubbing, edema, or generalized lymph node In head to toe examination, spine examination was gross. The parabdomen patient was examined in supine position with implied consent with exposure from nipple to knee, uh, nipple to mid thigh in adequate room light. On inspection, umbilicus centrally placed all quadrants moving equally with respiration, no scars, sinuses, or engorged veins were seen. On palpation, no localized temperature, no tenderness was there. On deep palpation of right flank, patient developed palpation and perspiration. Ladder was not palpable. On percussion, tympanic note was uh, hurt all over abdomen. Normal liver dullness was present. On auscultation, normal bowel salts were present. No bruising or venous some hurt. External genitalia was normal. All hernia, all face was normal. Fine. So, Sashwa, uh, you know, looking at this history, which are the diagnoses or which diagnosis comes into your mind? Sir, uh, a 57-year-old female uh, recently diagnosed uh, hypertension with episodes of uh, paroxysm of hypertension and associated with palpitation and uh, perspiration, sir. And my first diagnosis I'd like to keep as a pheochromocytoma, sir. Okay. So, if so, you are... Yeah. So, if you are expecting a pheochromocytoma in uh, this patient, uh, how much is the BP? Uh, Blood pressure so, 220 by 110. Yeah. So here question arises about what is meant by hypertension crisis. If this much is the BP, then at what blood pressure level you are expecting, it is a, it, you can label it as a hypertension crisis. And what will happen if a patient had a hypertension crisis? Sir, hypertension crisis, uh, patient can have uh, apoplexy also, sir. Seen a bleed can happen, sir. Deco, when the bl blood pressure is uh, more than 180 by 110, 
then it is indicative of hypertension crisis when it because the heart is not able to uh, keep up the demands of uh, other organs okay with this bp so it is it is like it is like empty pumping and yes. it will lead to the coronary artery disease or left ventricular failure or heart failure so all, uh, when the, with this much bp the patient may have signs of heart failure yes okay sir. So th this is yeah. one thing. As this BP is too too high in this patient, another in past history one can ask uh, uh, history of acute attacks in the past. Yes, sir. Like uh, so, how will you ask the uh, history of acute att attack? Like uh, asking the history of profuse uh, diaphoresis or dilated pupils, cold extremities, severe hypertension, history of stroke, blindness, sudden blindness for temporary period of time when that blood pressure is reached up to that level, it, it may end up into the sudden blindness. So this history is uh, in the past and with this BP, you have to rule out uh, the uh, problem uh, caused by hypertension crisis because it is 200 something you are told and uh, the diastolic is 110. Fine. So this is one important thing what Dr. Gita has said, that past in the past, this is very important. Any transient uh, ischemic attack on, you know, something is uh, patient had. We have to die, ask that directly. Sometimes they may not uh, tell you. Okay, go ahead, Swastik. Swastik, go ahead. I asked for investigations, but the examination is over. Okay, so you want the investigations. What are the investigations you want? Certain uh, blood investigations, uh, predominantly CBC, serum creatinine, and urine nutrient micro, and sir, uh, uh, USG, uh, abdomen, and pelvis. See, these and are the in this case, uh, we are suspecting adrenal. Yeah, tell us in this patient what extra you will ask for. Uh, sir, if you are suspecting abdominal lesion, uh, we'll, I will ask for plasma free metanephrine and uh, serum aldosterone level and uh, uh, cortisol level. Okay. Fine. So, Swastik, can you just show them? Direct brain levels were done. It was 4.4 is in the normal range. Then, sir, uh, metanephrines, three metanephrines were done. It was 4 and 450, sir. Normal is 4 total. Uh, So metanephrine was uh, 50.4, which is which was within normal limit, but not metanephrine free in the, uh, the free plasma. Not metanephrine was 450. So now, yes. Next, Swastik. What else was done? Sonography was done. Sir. Uh, uh, imaging was done, sir. sir. Imaging was done. Kidney, uh, ureters were normal. USG, KB, and abdomen was sir, normal, sir. All uh, solid organs were normal. Kidneys were normal. No uh, uh, intraabdominal mass was there, sir. Yes. Okay. Just wait. So, next, what you want to do after this? Tashpat? Sir, I'd like to obtain a. Cross sectional imaging, sir. Uh, and then CCT, CT. So, when, when, when such a patient comes, you will ask for a CT, CCT, correct? So, when you send for the CCT, what you will tell? Sir, okay. with adrenal protocol, we'd like to obtain an adrenal protocol, sir, which includes a non contrast image and then uh, uh, delayed, sir, washout films. You want to take, sir, 15 minutes post contrast. Venous and related, sir. 
Ajay, you, you uh, just uh, elaborate and tell us. Sir, uh, since uh, out of all the investigations, uh, only norometanephrine is the, is the thing which is raised and which is, could be attributed, uh, could be responsible for the abrupt proximal high BP episode patient is suffering. So, firstly, we will like to do CT chest abdomen pelvis with the adrenal protocol. In adrenal protocol, we uh, achieve one CT, CT abdo pelvis plane, then one venous phase, and then one delayed phase. Venous phase at uh, 70 seconds and delayed phase at 15 minutes. Then we calculate so, the. Uh, so, why, why you want that one. delayed phase? Sir, uh, we need to calculate uh, the absolute washout and the relative washout. And if it's more, the absolute is more than 60 and relative is more than 40, then it is high probability it's adenoma. And if it's less than, it's not a adenoma. And why you want a plain film? For uh, plain film itself can be diagnostic in, in majority of the cases when it is uh, it's a lipid containing lesion uh, with HU of less than 10. And it also helps in calculation of the relative washout. Sir. And what is the significance of HU? Sir, it signifies sir, intracytoplasmic lipids. If the Hounsfield unit is uh, at a cutoff of 10, uh, sir, it signifies uh, intracytoplasmic lipid uh, in the adrenal lesions. If that is our seven sensitivity of 70%, sir. And uh, if we take the cutoff even lower, then uh, the specificity, uh, specificity rises, sir. Sensitivity for the falls. Okay. Fine. So let's take, show them. Swastik, I think Swastik's uh, signals are going away. Okay. So, fine. Um, he will just uh, show you the CT so, so, I can add one or two point. Delayed phase is uh, used to differentiate between the uh, adenoma and metastasis. Okay. So, I, I uh, the criteria used for diagnosing the adenoma already you have told. And the sensitivity of the CT scan is uh, 90, 93 to 100% for adrenal lesions and extra adrenal lesions, it is near about 90%. Uh, or extra adrenal lesions, if you are expecting, the MRI is better than the CT scan. Yes, so I just show them all the films. Yes. Oh, sorry, sir, my network had gone, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, these were the first films, sir. Can you enlarge it? Yes, sir. Sir, uh, there is one more film, sir. I'll just go to one more film, sir. So these are multiple phasic films, sir. All the phases are this. This is the most important, I think, plate. Just enlarge it and let them have a look. And then you read the report. 
This is the plain one. Then this RTD, the late this is delayed, and this is at 15 minutes period. Okay, now read the report. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, the observations were uh, related to the adrenal. A small hypodense region of 7 HU measuring 7.2 into 6.9 millimeter was seen in the body of right adrenal gland suggestive adenoma. A tiny nodular intensely enhancing lesion measuring 4 into 2 millimeter was seen in lateral limb of right adrenal gland averting the ad adjacent segment 6 of liver. The left adrenal gland was unremarkable and no evidence of focal lesion was seen. Prompt excretion of contrast was seen in both kidneys and renal parenchyma on either side showing uniform enhancement. There was no evidence of calculus or hydronephrosis. Uh, the impression was small hypotense lesion in body of right adrenal gland suggested adenoma. Tiny nodular intensely enhancing lesion in lateral limb of right adrenal gland may represent a small pheochromocytoma. So, Sachwa, this is the report. Yes, sir. This is not a very classical, uh, like, you know, mass in the adrenal giving rise to, you know, typical pheochromocytoma. Yes, sir. So, now what, what will be your uh, say on this? Sir, uh, because the metanephrines are also high and it's an enhancing tiny, although a tiny lesion, but an enhancing lesion, sir, we should actually stage the pheochromocytoma, sir should get a FDG pet. Okay. Ganesh, what, how normally you people work? We do an FDG pet CT nowadays. And um, CT scan is a good image. Very few patients, we would still like to do an MRI. MRI मतलब just complete the expression shows that classical light bulb sign which may still not be there in about okay so what was done uh, sir uh, from our side sir uh, scan was done sir the puppet pet scan the ultra tech pet scan was done sir. A somatostatin receptor uh, for PET CT was done, sir. And uh, the findings were there was no abnormal SSTR expression in the small hypotense nodules seen in the medial limb of right adrenal gland, likely benign. No ab abnormal somatostatin receptor expression for focal lesion is seen elsewhere in the right adrenal and in the left adrenal gland. No evidence of somatostatin receptor expressing disease anywhere in the body. So, uh, okay. Uh, Dota, the drawbacks of Dota. Here, the CT is good investigation. Uh, Dota is specific. Smaller lesions are usually missed in the uh, Dota. And that is uh, specifically placed for screening the genetically predisposed people. And if you are suspecting multiple paraganglion. So Dota has a specific role in such situations. Uh, here, uh, patient has a clinically symptomatic. Uh, plasma nor metanephrine is already is, is suggest one of the best investigation having a more than 95% sensitivity and uh, CT is suggestive. So as far as uh, me is concerned, this much is sufficient if you, are, if you want to plan something. If you have any doubt, then uh, okay, then you have to go ahead with the MRI, if you, then uh, daughter scan and furthermore MIBG, whatever you want to do. Uh, further investigations. Uh, that's what uh, we do at our place. But FDG, basically, they are doing it just to find out whether there is any extra uh, adrenal uh, tumors are there or not. Correct? Mm. Right. 
agreed sir so Fine. mdg mdg pet actually seems to be a better investigation than the Correct. plastic old mibg and mibg also was like we i think we could not do it in the initial work up because whenever we used to give us that particular dose of mibg even if there were say metastatic not nodes or whatever it used to get concentrated in the few only so our normal protocol that time used to be that we used to operate the few and later on we used to do mibg if we if we used to see then other lesions in the mibg then it was a different thing metastatic correct so now with mbg pet dotanoc is a totally selective uh, pet scan but otherwise fdg pet is also okay correct i think books are also saying that fdg pet scan be sufficient fine so now this is a report so sashwat now now next what you want to do so sashwat wo batao na what is the 10% rule in adrenal sir in uh... Pheochromous adenoma, sir, ten percent uh, can be uh, bilateral, sir. Ten percent can be extra adrenal, ten percent, mm. and uh, they can be familial, sir. Ten percent are familial, and ten percent okay. are metastatic, and ten percent are pediatric. Ten percent are multiple, ten percent are recurrent, and ten percent are malignant. Yes. <laughs> so remember everybody these are come some common things which can be asked in the exam adrenal so ye rules hai matlab 10% rules hai then adrenal ka triad hai of the presenting complaint so some examiners can ask you all those things so sashwat now yes, tell sir. us the triad and tell us the 10 about adrenal in one go so that yes. you know whoever listens to this they will remember So what so is the prior? 10 percent can be uh, bilateral, sir. 10 percent are extra adrenal. 10 percent are familial, and 10 percent are uh, malignant. And 10 percent cases are multiple. 10 percent cases are recurrent. 10 percent cases are seen in pediatric age groups, sir. Very good. And Achin, what is the prior? Uh, usually, uh, patients present with headache, uh, palpitations, and sweating. Yeah, headache, palpitations, and sweating. This is a classic triad. Paroxysms of hypertension, which cause the palpitations, and these are basically all adrenergic symptoms for you all to remember. Now, so these are the findings. Now, what you want to do, Sashwat? Sir, we like to counsel the patient about the uh, findings, sir. Explain the nature of the disease and uh, count. Uh, tell them that. The paroxysm of hypertension and palpitations are probably because of the uh, pheochromocytoma, which the adrenal mass which we have found on the imaging. And then we'd like to, sir, uh, plan the section and do a proper preoperative blood pressure control and counsel them for uh, resection, sir. So In the blood preparation. Blood pressure now, control. There is no mass pain. That's what there is no mass pain, na? Sir, in the CT scan there was uh, uh, adrenal uh, mass, sir. Yes, sir. No, eight millimeter, no. four millimeter nodule. That was just a adenoma. They are saying adenoma in non enhancing. It was not sure. Sir, contributing. There are two masses. One is adenoma. Apart from the adenoma, there is a smaller mass. That is uh, of concern. Yes, okay so now what are the risk you will tell the patient this question what sir has asked you can tell like the one is the presence of mass that is the size of mass and another yes. is the functioning of mass functioning yes, or not functioning if the whatever may be the size if it is a functioning mass and causing symptom that mass needs some attention or some treatment yes, so here 8 mm mass Smaller mass comparatively. Yes. Sir. Okay. So less than four four centimeter, but it is a symptomatic. Yes, sir. Then uh, uh, biochemically also it is a uh, functioning. Uh, so this uh, this mass needs treatment. That's what uh, you have to tell in exam. Yes, sir. 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 Yes,
yes, mass sir. is smaller but it is functioning and patient has the symptoms sir in this case if we have found the metanephrines are elevated should we also get a low dose dexamethasone suppression test check the cortisol levels or should we if we have found one thing should we not complete the metabolic profile so with the abnormal abnormality seen as a profile you can send all and a patient presenting technically with a symptom of per tension probably you can you can do all like you can do a serum cortisol you can do a pr plasma renin everything yeah, out of all these maybe the striking feature might still be plasma nor metanephrine which is high yes sir so along with that if the fdg pet shows you know bright then uh, it has functional value yes sir then you correlate with a uh, few i mean rarely an adrenocortical carcinoma might be functional producing normetanephrine and also show up on the fdg pet ct with lot of activity yes sir so you are going to work up towards surgery right yes, that's what you said Yes, sir. You said control of hypertension. So control of hypertension is one aspect, but you have to optimize the patient technically till you go for surgery. मतलब yes, the sir. traditional traditional yes, uh, two weeks before the uh, surgery, sir. We would like to start a uh, alpha one blocker, sir, phenoxybenzene at a initial dose of ten milligram twice a day, and we will titrate it up every two to three days by increments of ten to twenty milligram. Till we reach a dose of one milligram per kg, sir, and with the along with that, sir, if the patient uh, develops any tachycardia or palpitation worsen, then we would like to add a beta blocker, sir, atenolol or metoprolol. And uh, despite that, sir, if the blood pressure is not controlled, we would like to uh, add a catecholamine blockade, metyrosine, which should be. given at least 3 days to show effect sir despite that if the blood pressure is not controlled we we'll like to add a calcium channel blocker sir and uh, all these drugs are given till the last day of surgery and on the morning of surgery sir phenoxybenzamine and metyrosine are omitted and uh, the patient is admitted at least 24 hours prior to the surgery and we have to uh, preload him with uh, iv fluids and selling uh, sir so, so number one why you want to start uh, alpha first and not the beta sir starting a beta blocker will lead to uninhibited uh, alpha 1 activity and may lead to a hypertensive crisis sir that's why sir alpha blocker should be given first followed by uh, beta blocker sir and what is the also, reason behind that sir why why sir all the available catecholamines will act preferentially on the alpha 1 receptor sir and cause a hypertensive crisis achin can you just explain yes sir out of the two catecholamines catecholamine say little louder achin yes. can you hear me sir yeah tell me sir out of the two catecholamines available uh, one is non epinephrine second is epinephrine non epinephrine acts on alpha 1 and epinephrine acts on beta 2 So the alpha one action is vasoconstriction, whereas the beta two action is vasodilatation. So whatever the patient presents with both the catecholamines, if they are active, the patient still has some amount of beta two vasodilatation that gives a certain amount of BP level. It may be high, it may be low. But if we add beta blocker uh, before the alpha blockade, the beta two vasodilatation is omitted, and then alpha automatically unopposed action of the alpha one will lead to hypertension crisis. So that is why we start first the alpha, and then alpha we blocker. start the alpha blocker, and then we start the beta blocker. Fine, sir. Cardiology workup work should also be is advised, sir. Two uh, D echo must also be given because patients, this kind of patients may have be having some sort of cardiomyopathy also. Correct. If someone has asked a patient is already on the five anti-hypertensive drug, yes, 
patient was seen by uh, endocrinologist and uh, she was already you know working on this patient so that is how when they when this patient came to us already she had started alpha blocker and then the beta blocker so whatever is going on is as per the protocol uh, she had started only thing is that uh, she said that uh, nowadays we don't have uh, phenoxybenzamine uh, and they control with the calcium channel blocker i don't know about the latest theory about that no uh, the uh, calcium channel blocker why people are preparing nowadays is because there are uh, less hemodynamic instability with calcium channel blocker compared to the phenoxybenzamine or alpha blocker so now uh, calcium channel blocker is preferred and, uh, next question is how will you evaluate uh, the, that the, the adrenergic blockage is uh, sufficient for Uh, that is based on Rosion criteria, sir, uh, which has uh, two BP parameters and two ECG parameters. BP parameters being uh, seven days before the planned operation, the uh, BP should not be more than uh, 160 by uh, 110, and the orthostatic hypotension should not be less than 80 by 45. And uh, in ECG parameters, uh, there should be shouldn't be any ST or T wave changes one day before the surgery, and there shouldn't be any uh, 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 VPCs five more than five VPCs per uh, one VPC for five minutes. Less than one over five minutes. Yes. Okay, and that BP what you are told that is one sixty by ninety five in spite of one hundred and ten. Okay, fine. So, how much fluid you will overload, Sashwat? You are saying that you will over uh, give the fluid one day before in the night. How much you will give and what you will give, sir? Saline, sir. We like to give about uh, one liter saline. Sir. Okay. What happens to diabetes, sir? Because of the stimulation of the uh, alpha two receptor, sir. Uh, there is a decrease in the insulin production, sir. So uh, there is a transient increase in the sugar levels. But when the tumor is removed, sir, uh, there is a sudden release of insulin and patient can go into hypoglycemia. So now you want to... So when you will give glucose then? Sir, after the resection, sir... Yeah. So during when you are removing the gland, now you know okay, there are if the patient is already on uh, this insulin because of uh, alpha blocker, then you have to contemplate that and you have to give understood five uh, just think glucose during the surgery. Fine. So now this is pre-operatively we have prepared the patient and you are taking what are the precautions you will take during the surgery. Sir, manipulation of the uh, adrenal during the section. No, no, no. Is it a very simple surgery? No, sir. There is always a risk of hypertensive crisis. During so, what are the, the things you will do before anesthesia? What What are the things you will ask the anesthetist to do? Sir, uh, nitroglycerin drip should be ready, sir. Along with that, uh, sir, corticosteroids. Dexamethasone should be given during the uh, induction, sir. And no, apart from it, endotracheal tube intubation, yeah, what else? You I want know, central uh, line? You want arterial, arterial line, line? Central line, okay, yes, both sir. Yes, sir. And oh, NTG case are as small all Yes, sir. See, when you see all these things, when you say all these things, na. The examiner knows that you have seen the case or you are assisted. Yes, sir. You know, we always make central line. We always ask for uh, arterial line. Okay? Yes, sir. Fine. Okay, and during the surgery, because the handling will increase the blood pressure. But, so, look, confirm it. Yeah, Dr. Gita, you are saying something. Confirmation of the address. Yeah. 
can uh, first uh, confirmation of the adequate fluid replacement so the one in standing position it should be more than 90 that is one thing another thing already told it is a central line arterial line then uh, all the drugs are related to management of hypertension to all that should be ready uh, then uh, uh, the induction should be avoided with the cat uh, then should be minimal because uh, the bp may be uh, raised due to handling or due to the uh, 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 or if you are doing a laparoscopy then that may be due to the uh, insufflation uh, short insufflation so that these are the some tr triggering points to raise the bp so such points, uh, excess insufflation, yeah, fear, uh, excess handling, yeah, fear, uh, intubation trauma should be avoided. And BP should be continuously uh, monitored by arterial BP line, arterial line. Right. And again, uh, so the, some surgical steps we will discuss during the surgery. We have to avoid the uh, uh, right BP. Okay, fine. So now you, which which type of surgery you will prefer, Shashwat? Sir, it's a uh, small tumor, sir. Uh, we, we can offer laparoscopic uh, adrenal ectomy, sir. Okay. So what are the advantages? So in which adrenal surgery you will not advise laparoscopic? Sir, if the tumor is more than six centimeters, it is uh, it is advisable to go for open surgery, sir. Any tumor or particular? Adrenal cortical carcinoma. Cortical carcinoma, sir. I think. Yes. So, change why you want to avoid? You don't want to do laparoscopy. Uh, sir, minimally invasive approach is avoided, particularly in case of adrenal cortical carcinoma, because of uh, uh, high recurrence rate in case of phosphate margin. Even if the margins are negative, there is still high recurrence rate. And also, peritoneal seedling, uh, chances of peritoneal seedling and foresight metastasis is more. Fine. So, this is the reason. Good. Okay. So, just tell us the important steps. If you are doing laparoscopic, or even open surgery, what are the important steps to avoid? If, if you are doing laparoscopy, okay. If you are not doing laparoscopy, at least you should know the open surgical steps. Uh, as far as the... offered to each and every patient, uh, surgery is more preferred than the open surgery for the a tumor less than six centimeters, but it is only the matter of uh, expertise. Few people will do up to eight centimeter, ten centimeter. Four centimeter. Now it is six. Few books it's uh, written as six centimeter. So uh, in the exam, laparoscopy for less than six centimeter. Uh, Laparoscopic facilities are not, not available at my institute where I come to with open surgery. I will be more accomfortable with open surgery, so I will do open surgery. That will be the another op option, good option, if you know the steps of open surgery. And if you know the steps of laparoscopy or robotic and day in and day out, if you are doing such type of surgery, then it is better to tell laparoscopy or robotic only. So, Ganesh, you have done all the different methods. So, which one you think that is a uh, practically, which one is the best to do? Sir, for CO, uh, laparoscopy, probably minimally invasive. I mean, robotic and laparoscopic, let us not 
dissect into that but uh, laparoscopic is a very good method the dissection can be nicely done with uh, i think uh, 8 10 cm also but we should not go beyond the certain limit as keep the server thing because the examiner can pull you up practically we can do and uh, it's very good with respect to handling the tumor with respect to laparoscopy open okay. surgery uh, if you are explaining in exam then best is you should know all the incisions properly some one or two incisions how you can tackle the adrenal and uh, again the same thing handling and everything but so normally is the good method normally which because the many of them have not seen uh, this surgeries you know or hardly seen one or two so can you just give them the ideas and so that what they should answer in exam so very honestly uh, the answer which gitesh sir gave is the exam answer if you want me to talk about uh, how to do how to place laparoscopy i can tell that sir so kya batao ओपन क्या कौन सा इंसिजन इज अंसिडर इज अंसिजन सो वी वी विव टू गो ऑन द साइज ऑफ द एड्रेनल बिकॉज वी कैन टेक मल्टीपल इंसिजन वी कैन टेक शेवरॉन वी कैन टेक अ पार्ट शेवरॉन वी कैन टेक स्लाइट सबकॉस्टल विच गोज लिटिल अप वी कैन टेक मेनी इंसिजेंस मतलब इफ इट इज अ वेरी बिग एड्रेनल वी कैन यू एन टेक मिड लाइन मिड लाइन माकुची एनीथिंग वी कैन टेक अलेवेंथ टेन्थ रिब कटिंग इंसिजन वी कैन टेक अंथ रिब सो देर आर सो मेनी इंसिजेंट विच विल आर देर एंड वी विल नीड टू प्लैन एज पर आवर रेडियोलॉजी इमेजिंग ऑफ द पर्टिक्युलर केस इन देर नाउ द केस विच वी आर डिस्कसिंग देर इज हार्डली एनी मास कैन इफ इट इज right side you know we can get away with a 10th rib bed incision or something there is a chance of opening the pleura cutting the diaphragm reaching the adrenal and getting out it if it is a left side then we have to climb up on the rib technically or then as i said you take a chevron incision or a part chevron with respect to laparoscopy uh the ports are quite similar like uh, kidney but we would place them a little nearer the costal margin probably because we are directly on the adrenal in that case and it is very easy to dissect the adrenal uh, few from the renal surf gerotas uh, below between the kidney and the adrenal and uh, ivc there are a lot of small veins which will come from the ivc to the adrenal although there is a one main adrenal vein but lot on the right side lot of chota chota veins will come which technically uh, with the use of some energy either harmonic or uh, the other one like assure it will be very easy surgery and usually there is a twig from the renal artery also which comes uh, from down up as the arterial supply some will come from the diaphragm see And... dr ganesh has given you beautiful answer there are multiple because if you are not doing regularly this surgery you think that there is only one main vein coming from the uh, means going to the vena cava and that's And, the main uh, vein yeah but apart from that you said rightly in this case also we had a multiple veins you know and even though the anatomy is not saying that uh, you know the there is a branch coming uh, going towards the renal vein or towards the kidney you always see some branch going towards uh, kidney also so this is a very valid point there are multiple veins are present that is very important and secondly many times we have seen that till the last vein is kind of down last mm -hmm. one or two veins the bp remains quite good or quite high and that is why when you take the last vein the catecholamines and uh, stop and there is a crash in the patient's bp so it's so okay. 
it to tell the anesthetic that more devascularizing the adrenaline so that they are ready with the opposite drugs actually opposite drugs and to give any fluids boluses or anything if at all they are ready with that so i think your corollary is that if the bp is not crashing that means still there is one some vein remaining yeah remaining that is how i generally handle it because many times in the one one of the case we saw that instead of 220 the bp came down to 120 okay and then we were very happy because we are ligated a main vein and then suddenly you know it started increasing so ultimately when we ligated another two veins then suddenly it crashed so this is another valid point but laparoscopic adrenal is kind of one of the most fulfilling surgeries because right. uh, invariably if you go by open you are going to cut ribs and the approach is slightly difficult again comparing between minimally invasive and open there is lot of more handling which will happen always in an open surgery than laparoscopic or robotic surgery and for adrenal especially fios and paraganglioma we technically don't want a lot of handling to happen so which can be technically minimized with minimally invasive surgery one more point is that there is lot of difference between the endocrine society guidelines and the uh, other guidelines which are the surgical or the i mean the urological or the surgical oncology ones so on this side we believe that uh, minimal invasive can be done in any patients even in adrenocortical carcinoma on the other hand uh, they are of the belief that more than 6 cm and any suspected size of adrenocortical carcinoma endocrine guidelines say that you should always do an open surgery even if it is 3 cm or 2 cm or 4 cm fine so you people want to ask any question to dr ganesh no you can ask so now first the uh, Achin, now after removal, sudden the uh, blood pressure crashes. What you will do? Sashwat, you can also answer. We will supplement with IV fluid, sir. Mainly normal saline, sir. We supplement the. I didn't understand. Sorry. We supplement with IV fluid. Okay. For the And crash, huh? Yes. Okay. Are you? that is you, you should always be prepared to say an answer in a particular way no the initially on table crash will be managed by crystalloids then colloids we usually don't give blood because we know there is no blood loss in this surgery but there is a drop in bp because of something important which is called as catecholamines so if crystalloids and colloids many times are not going to manage the bp for us the obvious thing which happens everywhere is not adrenaline trip inotropic support inotropic support yes, it's it's quite common right yes sir there is no debate about it so say your answer in a very structured manner always crystalloids colloids and the next thing which should come is inotropes and move for almost everywhere The anesthetists at that time will be ready with the uh, norad. Rate which they will adjust as per the BP shows a response. Yes, sir. Or okay. क्या? Or कुछ ऐसा इसमें? Usually, uh, sir had asked this question कि कैसे manage करेंगे? So usually, we book an ICU bed also. It's, it's better that such patients remain in the ICU because they are on inotropic support, and if the inotropic support is the it wears off with return of the normal BP. So till then, it is better to shift the patient to an ICU also with good monitoring. Ideally, yes. These are very small points, but which are very valid. 
you know when you say all these things in exam the examiner you know knows that you have seen this case and you have no in and out about it so there is one question any major difference between right and left adrenal surgery so very honestly left adrenal surgery is slightly more comfortable always because there is no direct vein from the ivc the right adrenal vein is a short stump vein usually and uh, many times if the adrenal is grown up in size the vein sometimes is hidden behind whatever is the growth of the adrenal in the left side however we are very comfortable because as such the left adrenal vein drains into the left renal vein yep. so whatever said and done it's very easy to see that junction and again it is very easy to chop it off uh, quite early in a whole it is very easy and accessible and no catastrophe i mean if the right adrenal by chance misfires or bleeds you are going to have a direct bleed from the ivc and here it is no direct bleed at all nothing the adrenal itself is a slightly longish than the right adrenal remaining part of the left adrenal surgery i think is pretty simple the renal plane is in the same gerotas plane and the uh, upper plane is actually uh, related to the splenic uh, vessels and the pancreas so with a few or adrenal mass usually there is a good plane between these structures only thing during surgery is if you are doing open surgery you need to retract this nicely so you should put a mop over the pancreas and retract because it is a soft structure if you are doing a laparoscopy you should adjust your ports in such a way that you get some retraction of the pancreas that's it fine dr pankaj maheshwari anything else you want to add in adrenals sir hai nahi mere kaal se i think dr geeta is also left but yes, i sir. don't think much is left in this correct ganesh uh, not much is left in adrenal so and nowadays with the fdg pet we know if there are any metastatic uh, sites of adrenal before and only in earlier times what we used to do was after doing the adrenal we used to do a nmi bg scan after checking everything and then we used to do serum uh, plasma levels uh, after the surgery also okay so uh, और कुछ केस है एड्रिनल का क्या एस्टोपेट बताओ पेशेंट आर अंडरगोन रोबोटिक राइट एडिलेक्टोमी सर दिस वाज अ स्पेसिमेन सो दिस इज पैथोलॉजी रिपोर्ट्स एडिनो Yes, sir. This was the report. Sir. Yes, it came out to be adenoma, as per this report. Okay. So why it was missed in the CT scan then for the washout? Because this CT scan actually didn't have a washout percentage mentioned. I was looking for it. In this, uh, sir, already one adenoma was there. But apart from adenoma, also one more lesion was there. yeah but they could have always mentioned the washout percentage absolute and relative in on both the lesions that could have been the radiologist job they calculated but they have not mentioned and they mentioned on play screen but not after the box i say sure nahi rehta hai next time you discuss it with the radiologist yeah actually that uh, uh, well, uh, if you know rhinologist had nit shai talked to her she had already discussed with the radiologist i told her so she said no i have discussed with them and uh, they are very sure about it i said okay yeah. then i think we should share the histopath with her 
Yeah, but you think I I H T should be done? No, sir. I H T no. What I I I can't actually get a good microscopic description here. मतलब ये ज़्यादा लिखा नहीं है इसमें. So better to go and discuss again with the pathologist. Correct? हाँ या फिर एक अच्छे pathologist से review करवा लो because uh, if the pre-op uh, normator neptin level was high. Technically, there has to be some reason. Ad adenoma won't secrete normator. Yeah. No, in the they have shown that the, in such a case, was there actually a good BP change during the surgery? Pardon, I didn't get you. What we should have done? No, no. During the surgery, was there any fluctuation of BP, or was it a very straightforward surgery? Yeah, that time it was quite a straightforward. Ah, so then that also seems to go in favor of adenoma. Well, sometimes even few may straightforward ho jata hai, but not always. Few will have some variation or the other, at least on handling. Yeah, but as you said very rightly, na we came across small small veins, and before doing any dissection only, we could even get the uh, uh, adrenal big vein also. So. After that, then we dissected the. So we were lucky to get all the almost four to five small small veins and one large vein. But as you are saying, we will check it up. Okay. Ah, uh, histopath review ideally with a history. होना चाहिए वाला. Yeah, yeah. Fine. Okay. Anything else is left? So one two question. Yeah, बोल ना. Uh. Uh, now it has come to adenoma. Now, sir, we have to like repeat the plasma. We will talk to pathologist, but should we re repeat plasma metatarsal pre-metatarsal? See, if you have done an FDG PET scan and if you removed this lesion and then got it labeled as an adenoma, technically, I would see the patient clinically, take the BP and everything. I don't know about the pre-op status. Uh, is patient ko BP tha na? Yes, sir. Like getting BP with her, uh, he she was on five drugs. Sir. So, oh, so there are few few catches in this patient. One is a uh, NMN was high. Patient presented with the BP. What a scan! He showed a nodule as a hot nodule. Sir, no, next to that, nodule was not hot, but it showed that uh, watch out, delayed watch out, then everything was there from. Uh, right adrenal. Okay, so and end may it is adenoma. So if the BP of this patient has changed or not changed, it has come back to normal or not is also. Uh... Now only yeah. she is on only two antihypertensive diabetes is well controlled. मतलब she is out of anti OH. मतलब now she doesn't require any antihypertensives. Only two at least. Firstly, she was on five anti hypertensives. No, 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 no. Yachin, I talked to the uh, thing endocrinologist. Uh, they are only if the blood pressure increases. That's only right. these two anti hypertensive. If it increases, so when the patient was discharged for next, like you know, three to four days, she was not on any anti hypertensive. Okay. So, so if we have even got a decreased need of antihypertensives post the surgery, then ideally yeah. we need to review the histopathology. Yeah. So I'm going to do the same thing because these all clinically indicated whatever you removed was cause causal factor for the hypertension. Correct. I mean, there can always be a functioning adenoma, but. Uh, yeah. Adenomas, who are which are functioning, are usually more than four centimeters in size. Hmm. No, we'll do that. Yeah. Okay, Shashwat, Achin, anyone has got any question? Because we cannot dis discuss the whole adrenal; it will take another one and a half to two hours. Yes. So that we can do it later on. The okay. one question is there on the chat box, sir. Uh, Should we check metanephrines once again? So if this patient continues to have BP, I will check once. And uh, Ganesh, any uh, now any 
follow up important follow up we have to do sir i joined little late to iska age kitna hai 57 acha 57 so the important follow up kuch hai nahi matlab i fio is a benign lesion adenoma ah. is a benign so maybe i'll follow this patient once at 6 months just with a ct and then if there is nothing i don't think for a benign lesion technically we need a follow up so mainly i think only the blood pressure regular check up of blood pressure for next uh, couple of months what Are happens it? is in this the patient is already involved with a physician and an endocrinologist correct so for that purpose they are not going to follow up with the surgeon hmm. so so associated with adrenal fios okay so only ct scan may be required after 6 months just to Uh, because it is a benign thing yeah so okay. which which syndromes are associated with fios achin yes sir uh, von eppel and down syndrome sir then men 2a men 2b then the neurofibromatosis 1 and familial paraganglioma sir peri familial paraganglioma sir okay familial paraganglioma men to a b dono hai ki men to b hai nahi sir men to it and to b both both are 50% of chance of aur kuch nahi hai sir kuch nahi lag to we'll call it Ah yeah, yes, we will end up because the, we will request someone to you know talk about uh, full adrenal once these people are ready you know uh, for the exams. So Ganesh, one you have to prepare <coughs> that is about the CA panis. Hmm. So once you are ready, let us let us know because now from next Tuesday we are not going to have clinics because we have completed almost everything. Only CA penis is yeah CA penis is remaining and uh, mega ureter reflexing and obstructing. Only these two chapters are remaining, and then the, we have to prepare them for uh, exam. That is short cases, ward rounds, instruments, pathos specimen. So that we will do once this MCH exam is over. Okay. So once you are ready, let us know. Okay. ठीक है सर चलेगा सो विल हैव समथिंग लाइक अ पैनल डिस्कशन केस पैनल डिस्कशन या लास्ट टाइम व्हाट एवर यू हैव डन ना सिमिलरली आई डोंट नो वो किधर है वो ही कर लेते हैं अच्छा रहेगा या अच्छा था वो श्योर और यू कैन ऐड सम अदर डिफरेंट केसेस इनटू इट आल्सो नो प्रॉब्लम सर कर लेंगे ओके या ओके ओके यस गुड नाइट एंड ऑल द बेस्ट टू ऑल द स्टूडेंट्स हु आर एग्जाम गोइंग बाय गुड नाइट बेस्ट ऑफ लक Good night, Good night, Ganesh bhai. Good night, Good night. Thank sir, you, sir. Thank Gaurang, you. Sir, Gaurang, sir, kindly end the session. Sir, kind, kindly end the session, Gaurang, sir. Okay, I'll end the session. Okay, thank you, sir.